Managing a patient who presents with a chronic cough is a real clinical challenge. Patients have often been left undiagnosed, untreated, have seen multiple specialists and continue to suffer from unpleasant symptoms which have a profound impact on their quality of life. Now the list of differential diagnoses for chronic cough is enormous. So how do you as a clinician go about managing a patient with chronic cough? This show aims to solve that conundrum. This is Euphoria News. Hello and welcome to Euphoria News, I'm Dr David Bull. A chronic cough is defined as a persistent cough that lasts eight weeks or longer on some or most days. Now clearly a cough can be a symptom of many lung diseases, but it can also manifest from conditions that are not related to the lungs. There are two types of chronic cough. Symptomatic chronic cough is caused by an underlying disease and can be treated once the disease is diagnosed. And a refractory chronic cough is a cough that persists despite guideline-based treatment. It's not just a nuisance to the patient because having a chronic cough is incredibly debilitating. It can interrupt your sleep, leave you feeling exhausted, can cause vomiting, lightheadedness and even rib fractures. And given the list of differential diagnoses is so vast, where do you even start in the management of a patient? Well, joining me now is Professor Peter Hellings. He's the founder and chairman of Euphoria. He's also professor in otorhinolaryngology at the Catholic University of Leuven in Belgium. He's also clinic head in the Department of Otorhinolaryngology at the University Hospitals of Leuven. Peter, always good to talk to you. Where do we even start here? Because chronic cough is really a disease. It's not really a symptom, is it? Indeed, chronic cough is a challenging condition that is often undiagnosed and also underrecognized as a major problem that affects up to 5 to 10% of the total population. And indeed, we don't really know where to start because chronic cough patients, they seek advice at primary care level. They go and see a specialist for uh, advice, and this could be a pulmonologist, an allergologist, or an ENT surgeon. And there is no real multidisciplinary approach for this condition. And this renders this condition really unique, both at the diagnostic as well as at the therapeutic level. So in your experience, how do patients tend to present? Because obviously they say, I have a chronic cough, but there, it, there are a lot of sequelae to that, aren't there? Like, for example, disruption of sleep, dizziness, syncope, sometimes even rib fractures. Indeed, in those patients with severe, long-standing chronic cough, they may have so many comorbidities like fatigue, uh, sleep deprivation, uh, even rib fractures or also uh, reflux disease because of the, the pressure in the thorax uh, and, and also the, the repeated coughing. And we as a clinician need to recognize not only the major presenting symptom, which is chronic cough, but also ask about all the potential comorbidities and also the impact that chronic cough has on the overall quality of life. For us as a clinician, it's very important to try to take a very good history and trying to figure out what could be the reasons for which patients present with chronic cough. And if we think very carefully on the different etiologic factors, we can clearly distinguish four different factors that may either alone or in combination be responsible for chronic cough. And in my simple mind, I try to simplify the diagnosis into the four uh, different reasons. Uh, one could be inflammation or problems at the level of the nose and the sinuses, and this could be an allergy problem or a sinus problem. There could be a laryngeal problem or an a problem at the level of the esophagus, or there could be bronchial uh, symptoms associated with chronic cough. And then I think here of patients with comorbid asthma and also comorbid COPD, for instance. So, and then the fourth pillar of uh, causes of uh, chronic cough 
could be those in which we do not find any etiologic factor. And this is also a significant proportion of patients with chronic cough. Uh, that's really interesting because, uh, as, you, as you know, the list of differentials is absolutely enormous. So you think that that is a very useful way to break it down into those four pillars because essentially what you're trying to do is work out whether someone has asthma or, say, bronchiectasis, bronchiolitis, whatever it is, or sarcoid, lung cancer. So, so is that how you approach this? Indeed, we as the ENT community, we look at chronic cough from our uh, perspective, which is we try to exclude respiratory allergy, we try to exclude sinus disease, and we also look at the larynx, at the vocal cords, in order to make sure there is no local problem causing or triggering chronic cough. This is the ENT perspective, whereas our colleagues from the pulmonology perspective, they will try to rule out inflammation at bronchial level, so they will rule out asthma, COPD, bronchiectasis, or other conditions that are associated with chronic cough. And when these patients seek uh, advice at an allergologist, this allergologist may try to rule out uh, comorbid allergies, uh, because we all know that allergies to, to any kind of inhalant uh, particles may also induce cough. So different specialities look at chronic cough in a different way, and they try to also uh, take care of their part of the respiratory tract, mainly focusing then on chronic cough. But this is a challenge in real life because in some patients, there may be even more than one trigger uh, that is responsible for uh, the development and the chronicity of chronic cough. So, so in terms of every single patient, the patient journey therefore must look different depending who they present to. Indeed. And we know from studies and, and, and reports that in most patients that seek a specialist advice, chronic cough has been going on for several years before they have a proper diagnostic workup. And there is thus, there's a huge opportunity for the medical community to improve care for these patients with chronic cough by shortening the disease journey, by more multidisciplinary collaboration, and also by simplifying the available guidelines because several organizations uh, have worked on guidelines and recommendations for the, the diagnosis and the treatment of chronic cough, but none of these guidelines is really uh, reflecting the clinical reality nor uh, consistent with each other. So also therefore the physicians dealing with chronic cough might be confused and there is a huge opportunity for the medical academic community to simplify the guidelines and to make the guidelines accessible for all those healthcare providers dealing with chronic cough. So, so you mentioned guidelines there. Are there any treatment algorithms at all? Is there a, a treatment pathway that clinicians can follow? Or is it a, a matter of, as you say, taking a really rigorous history, trying to work out uh, what are mitigating factors and indeed what those potential causes might be? Exactly as you state, David, there are some treatable traits, meaning if a patient has sinus disease, you will go and treat the sinus problem. If a patient has uh, allergies to, to molds or to house mite, you will start tr uh, anti-allergic treatment. If this patient has asthma or chronic bronchitis, uh, there is a huge opportunity to treat uh, the, the bronchitis in this patient population. When there is laryngeal problems, or even problems at the level of the esophagus with gastroesophageal reflux disease, then of course it's a no-brainer that we treat these treatable traits first and see how well these patients respond. Unfortunately, there is a group of patients that, is re that remains refractory to the treatment of these treatable traits and in which we need novel treatment considerations. And luckily enough, there are several new options for these patients coming, but it's up to us, the scientific community, to not only perform the trials showing efficacy for these new treatment options, but also join forces in order to make sure that patients with refractory chronic cough will in the future get access to the right treatment. There's also a lot of stigma, isn't there, about presenting with a chronic cough. I'm thinking particularly about women, for example, who may present with urinary incontinence. I think it's a no-brainer that uh, all the associated problems with chronic cough, uh, the social impairment and the burden around having chronic cough when you go to a theater, or as you mentioned, David, having in incontinence 
or uh, other problems like rib fractures, it's, an, it's, it's very obvious that in those patients with severe refractory chronic cuff, uh, they suffer like hell because for now, the medical community has not taken this problem seriously enough, also because of the lack of good treatment options for those with refractory idiopathic chronic cuff. But I'm happy to announce here that this might change in the future because also the Euphoria expert panels will join forces in order to tackle this problem and to also make sure that patients with refractory chronic cuff will get more recognition in the future and also access to better care in the future. I was going to say this is a massive opportunity, isn't it, for Euphoria to raise awareness about chronic cough and also to provide guidance and advice to clinicians. Well, as you say, David, this is indeed a huge opportunity for uh, Euphoria because Euphoria focuses on optimal care for patients suffering from chronic respiratory diseases and chronic cough fully fits into this spectrum and fully fits into the priority activities of Euphoria from 2025 onwards because we need to have the patient's voice heard in a, in a better way. We need to uh, define simplified guidelines and treatment recommendations so that patients get actually a better quality of life and can be uh, helped in a better way than in the past. Can I just ask you, finally, if I may, you mentioned that medical professionals haven't really concentrated on chronic cough. Why has chronic cough received so little attention from the medical community? Is it because it is poorly understood or is it because it's actually very difficult to diagnose and treat? Well, as I mentioned before, there are challenges uh, when it comes to defining the etiology, so the causes of the chronic cuff, because there are many specialists involved into that process. Secondly, there are, at least to my knowledge, no multidisciplinary clinics dealing with this problem of chronic cuff. And lastly, uh, also from a clinician perspective, it's quite frustrating to deal with these kind of patients because for now we rely on a trial and error approach when it comes to treatment recommendation. You try the treatment for allergy, for uh, reflux disease, uh, for uh, sinus disease, uh, for uh, asthma, for instance, and you can at this moment not really predict how well these patients will, will respond. So therefore, uh, also the therapeutic options that we currently have uh, had access to uh, they did not lead to a lot of satisfaction from a physician perspective. And therefore, I'm glad that nowadays uh, Euphoria will take up the challenge to encourage more multidisciplinary collaboration in the context of chronic cuff, also making sure that we can collaborate better with patients, understand the needs of patients in a better way, so that in the end, patients suffering from chronic cuff get uh, a better access to treatment in the future. This is exactly what Euphoria also did in the field of CRSWNP. We even renamed the disease. We even had a lay name for this disease. We also simplified the guidelines. We made educational materials, both for patients as well as for physicians, in order to make sure that this condition does not lead uh, to a long-standing frustration and long-term reduction of quality of life of the affected patients. Peter, always good to talk to you. Thank you very much indeed. That's Professor Peter Hellings. Thank you, David. My pleasure. Well, that's it for this Euphoria News. Clearly, far more awareness needs to be raised around chronic cough to expedite diagnosis and to provide effective treatment for patients. Many thanks indeed to Professor Peter Hellings. Now, as I mentioned earlier, Peter is the founder and chair of Euphoria, and you can find more information about Euphoria and also register for the Euphoria educational events on the euphoria.eu website, where you can also sign up to receive the latest news via email. You can also follow Euphoria on social media, on YouTube, X, LinkedIn, Spotify, Instagram, and Facebook. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.